My school is a normal one. It has a lot of classrooms and a ton of dedicated teachers. School lunches that vary from perfect to downright terrible. The usual things. My town as a whole is an ideal one and it has a history that dates back decades. But that's what disturbs me so much about this whole situation. How could something so perfect turn deadly? At school, I would consider myself a pretty normal person. I would be someone who everybody knew of but would sometimes forget was there. I'd fade to the background. I did have a few close friends and it was all I needed. Ever since high school started for me last year, I'm a sophomore. I'd grown close to the head custodian who my friends and I called Mr. K. For the sake of keeping his name out of this, I'll be calling him that. Mr. K was a really nice guy and he cared a lot about the school. Some would even say too much. We would always see him in the hallways and wave to him. And during lunch, we'd be nearby his office and he would come to talk to us before he began to clean the floors after lunch let out. We all had after school sports too, so we'd see him then as well. One day, just a few months ago, he told us that he was going to begin working the night shifts, which basically meant that over the weekend, he would stay late after school cleaning every hallway and every classroom. We knew he had a wife and kids, so we voiced our concerns, saying it would be creepy at night and that he should be at home with his family. He assured us that two of the custodians from the school and a nearby elementary school had agreed to help him with the endeavor over the weekend. We asked him why he was doing this now, and he responded with, because the last guys who did it wanted to change shifts. And that's all he said about it. So that Friday, after we left school, Mr. K's day began. We knew that everything would go smoothly, and with the extra help, it would maybe take five hours, which were his estimates. So each night for five hours, they cleaned. That weekend, my friends and I did homework, I went to go see a movie, just regular things. Nothing was out of the ordinary. We got back to school on Monday and Mr. K didn't greet us where he usually did, which was by his office near the cafeteria. That's when we knew he must have taken the day off or was coming in late. And when he wasn't in lunch, we figured he had taken the day off to get rest. And then a week went by without him ever being seen. The custodians even looked a little spooked about it. The custodian that was with him that weekend was cleaning up before lunch and I knew I had to ask him where he'd gone. I asked him where Mr. K had gone and he had said that the school had told him that he'd moved districts. I asked him if Mr. K had ever said anything and all he said was he just did work that weekend and then the school said he'd moved. Later that week, my friends and I went to one of the secretaries and asked what really happened and they said they wouldn't go into it. Morgan, one of my close friends, said she was good friends with the vice principal, so she said she'd talk to him about what happened to Mr. K, and it ended up with the same answer. He transferred. Another week goes by and the new head custodian is someone named Gary. He was really nice, but he kept to himself, and we asked him if he knew Mr. K, and he said he didn't, but he's heard stories. We asked him which stories, and he said there was some sort of undisclosed incident that occurred the weekend he'd unexplicably left. We asked him to explain, and he said he would later. That Friday, practice was cancelled due to the rain, and we knew that was our chance. Gary sat us down in his office, and he told us what he had heard from the others. Here's all that I've heard, he began. Apparently he was sent to the math wing to investigate a door that had opened there. They obviously all thought that someone was attempting to enter the school, so Mr. K decided to go check it out. About five minutes later, Mr. K responded and said the door was shut and that there was no sign of entry, despite the fact that the door had been opened. Anyways, they'd gone back to work. So did somebody break in? I asked him. He shook his head. Not that anyone found. Later at like 2 in the morning, they heard a sound coming from the social studies wing, and one of the custodians went to investigate. He came back saying that one of the lockers had been left open, and the sound was it slamming against the other lockers. There was nothing inside of it and, again, they went back to work, eager to finish the job, 
It had been an extremely long night. I thought he said it would only take five hours, Sean, another friend of mine, said. It was taking longer than that. They usually have a few beers and stuff like that on the late shifts, listen to music, etc. But what happened next was the undisclosed incident. Now, for some context. During the late shifts, dim lights are turned on in each hallway and they barely illuminate the hallways. So one of the other custodians, John, saw the dim lights suddenly turn off in the math wing. So he went to investigate it. He turned them back on, and then the whole wing's lights flashed on and they suddenly turned off. Apparently the whole school's lights turned off soon after. It took them about 30 minutes to get the lights back on, but by the time they did, Mr. K couldn't be found. They stayed until 5 in the morning on Sunday trying to find him, but they never did. All they could find was his gear and his mop in one of the bathrooms in the English hallway. He disappeared? Morgan asked. How was that possible? Why would they keep it from us? I asked. That's what I heard, Gary said. I also heard that he'd walked out of the school. Maybe he had some sort of mental breakdown, I don't know. All that was told to us was that he had left and was transferred. So did they find him? I asked. Gary shrugged. I don't know, but I'll tell you this. You're never really alone in this school. A chill went down my spine, and we left soon after that, and Gary told us that he had the late shift that weekend, and he would tell us if he saw anything. On Monday, Gary was replaced by Stanley, a new custodian. And we asked the same questions, and Gary had been transferred. My friends and I decided that we had had enough, so we talked to the principal and told him about the patterns we'd been noticing, and he responded with the most chilling answer. The only thing I can tell you is that they've been taken care of. Over the next month, two others had been mysteriously transferred and all of them had been working the weekend shift. The school had seemed so intimidating ever since Mr. K had gone missing and there had been no media coverage at all. Custodians were leaving left and right and the school had began struggling with the low custodian staff. The end of the school year was last month and I went and interviewed one of the custodians who left. And here's what he had to say. Why did you leave? I asked him again. Because you're never alone in that school, he said. The things I've heard about what goes on, the things I've seen, what have you seen? I've seen hell. He wanted to end the interview soon after that. He said he already had plans to move away to a different state, not a new town or a county, a whole state. I wish this story ended there, but it doesn't. I really wish it did. It was two weeks into the summer when Morgan tried to convince me to spend a night at the school. And of course, that would mean breaking into the school since it was locked away. But I declined. Sean and Morgan went anyways and I slept knowing that I wouldn't be taking part in it. It was 11 o'clock when I heard it. My phone was ringing loudly and I knew that I had silenced it. I walked over and I saw it was Sean, but I was too tired to care so I declined it. The second I did, I saw the dozens of texts that he had left me. Jake, we got in. Oh my god, it's creepy as fuck. But the last one scared me. We need help. I knew what it meant. It meant that something went wrong. That's what I thought anyways. I called him back immediately and he answered. And what I heard will stick with me for the rest of my life. All I heard was a high-pitched scream that was so loud and visceral that I knew it was a scream of terror. It went on for about 30 seconds before everything went silent. I yelled Sean's name and tears began to well in my eyes. He simply said this before hanging up. We found Mr. K. I tried calling him five other times before I called the police. They interviewed me and three days later, they found the bodies. First, they found Gary's. He was found in the ceiling with his eyes gouged out. Cause of death. Suffocation. Then they found Sean's body a few hours later. 
They said he had died of blood loss. His limbs were missing. And then they found Morgan. Part of her was found in the library and other parts were found in Sean's stomach. Gary had been dead for a month, Sean only for a day or two. They never found Mr. K's body and it was also revealed his family had gone missing soon after his disappearance. They were looking for him all across the state and the country. The two other custodians that went missing were found in the theater. They had eaten each other. As of right now, the school is being torn down in a week and they'll begin rebuilding a new one. We'll be doing online work until then. The murders themselves weren't what drove me to write this post. It was actually what was delivered to me yesterday. It was from the police, and they said that they had found a letter addressed to me in the bathroom of the school. It was written by Morgan. It said, Dear Jake, I'll never see you again, and I know that now. Everyone was right. We aren't alone in this school. Ever. I need you to move far away from here and never come back. What's in this school will stay here, no matter what happens. And I think the principal knows it, too. Thanks for being such a great friend. I hear him now. Mr. K is looking for us. They found Mr. K's body this morning. He was found in a locker in the math hallway. He died of starvation two months ago. We had all noticed a strange stench overtaking the math hallway in the final days of school but they simply Febreze the hallway thinking it was a bad smell from the bathroom. The police began to suspect that he had gotten stuck in the locker and was unable to move, and was maybe unconscious so he couldn't talk. They also said he must have been in that locker for eight days before death. We all walked right past him, never knowing our dear friend was in that locker. The most terrifying part, it was a locker right next to mine. I only imagined that if he was alive in there, he was begging for me to find him. And I never did.